To access the Dremel DigiLab 3D slicing software, go to digilab.dremel.com. Go to the Software tab, and here, if you scroll down, you will see that the DigiLab 3D Slicer is now available for both Windows and Mac. So click whichever one makes the most sense for you, and download and install the program. When you open the program, for the first time, you will be prompted to add a printer and potentially connect to the local area network if you choose to do so. If you have already passed the screen, to add a printer, simply go to the top right, click Add Printer, select your model number, and hit Add Printer. Again, you can connect to the local area network, but in this case, I won't, so I'll just hit Cancel. So now you can see that I'm slicing for this printer named Dremel 3D45 number two. Here is the build plate. You can actually see an outline of the 3D45 build plate. And it's very uh, simple and easy to use. Now, to import a file, you can either open up your file structure, find your file and drag and drop, or you can go to File, Open Files, and then select your file that way. So once I select that STL file or OBJ file, it will populate on the build plate here. To manipulate your views, you can scroll in and out. You can hold the right button on your mouse or touchpad and move the orientation. Or you can hold shift and drag with the left button on the mouse or touchpad to move it like so. To manipulate the actual object you're slicing, you can move it, scale it, rotate it, or mirror it. To move it, you can either click and hold and drag it around, or you can type in actual numbers and move it that way if you want to be super precise. You can also scale it. And if you have this uniform scaling enabled, if you change one dimension, it will change all of them. Next, you can rotate. And if you have the snap rotation enabled, the rotations will automatically happen in increments of 15 degrees. And you can do this in all three dimensions. And if you choose to do so, you can also mirror your object. Now, to do actual slicing, we're just going to follow the easy workflow on the right-hand side of this screen. First, choose your material. In this case, I will choose the Dremel nylon material. Next, choose the profile. Do you want low quality or ultra quality or somewhere in between? And what this is is basically how thick do you want the layers to be? So for low quality, your thickness is going to be 300 microns, which is much greater than 50 microns for the ultra quality. Now, if you go with a low quality, you will have a certain roughness to the edges of your print. However, it will print much faster. And vice versa, with ultra quality, you'll have a very nice finish where it's nice and smooth. However, it will take a bit longer to print. Next, choose the infill. An infill is essentially meaning choosing the density within the 3D printed object. If you choose 0%, you're going to have a very hollow model versus 100%, where you're going to have a completely solid model. Now, again, there's a trade-off. The more dense you have your printed object, the longer it's going to take. However, the stronger it's going to be. Now, moving on, do we need to generate support? In this case, the overhangs of this print model are not too bad, and Dremel actually excels at printing, so I don't really need supports in this case. Does this model that I'm trying to print, does it require some extra build plate adhesion or creation of RAF to help? Uh, in this case, it's a very simple model, so Again, I don't need this. 
However, depending on the model that you are trying to print, you will need to modify this potentially. Now, once I've got this done, I've basically covered it. Now, if I wanted to have some more control and get into advanced settings, I can customize this. And I won't get into it in this video, but in a follow-up webinar video with the software expert, Mike Crow, we will get into some of the more advanced features and slicing options you have with this robust DigiLab 3D Slicer software. So that covers it. Once I'm ready to go, I hit prepare and the software will slice this for me. And once it's sliced, boom, I can hit save to file, save it to my thumb drive, where I can then manually put it into my printer, or I can directly print it to my printer via local area network.